Welcome to Inquiry, a podcast geared towards students, where we discuss all things related to tech, from school to industry. My name is Annie, and I'm Daniel, and together we are your co-hosts. Our team at Inquiry has been working hard to put together an eight-episode focus series titled "Tech After High School." In each of these eight episodes, we will be featuring various tech programs in Canadian schools. From varying computer science programs to biotechnology and biomedical engineering. For today's episode, we are so excited to introduce Shihan Chin. Shihan is a second-year computer science and business student at the University of Waterloo. She's interested in software engineering, and in her free time, she likes running and baking. Thank you so much for joining us, Shihan. Why don't you start off by telling everyone a little bit more about yourself? Yeah. Hello. I'm so excited to be on this podcast.、Um, so right now, I am in second year,、uh, studying computer science and business at the University of Waterloo.、Uh, right now, I am on a study term at home,、uh, and I am currently looking for a job for my co-op term、uh, next term、uh, at the beginning of winter, so in January. Uh, yeah, so I'm interested in exploring more、um, about like in the tech,、uh, not tech industry in general.、Um, I don't have like I'm still very open to、uh, exploring different sectors of tech, but I think right now I just wanted to focus and explore more、uh, towards software development and engineering, and also potentially more just、uh, like product as a whole. And then also in my free time, I、uh, recently picked up running, and I'm just using that as a way to find more balance in my life, and then also、uh, as a way to exercise. And then for baking,、uh, it's something that I've always really liked to do, and、um, it's really fun and stress relieving. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Sounds great. So your program is quite unique.、Um, so you're doing like a CS and BBA, which is the business portion. With Waterloo and、uh, Wilfrid Laurier University, so could you tell us a bit、yep. more about what this program is and how it works? Yeah, so in this program, it's a double degree program. So the University of Waterloo administers the, your、uh, computer science degree, and then the University of Wilfrid Laurier、uh, administers your business degree. So for me,、uh, all your computer science courses are、uh, offered by Waterloo. And Laurier has nothing to do with it. And then all your business courses are offered by Laurier, and Waterloo has nothing to do with it. So back when I was on campus,、um, all my computer science and math courses took place on the Waterloo campus, and I'd actually have to walk over to the Laurier campus to、uh, attend all my business lectures. And、uh, it was pretty interesting. And it's not too bad because the two schools are actually very close to each other.、Uh, I think like every day, maybe it was maximum a one-kilometer walk.、Um, Yeah, but I think this program is really unique in the sense that it gives you、um, insight and perspective on two really exciting industries. So,、uh, for computer science,、uh, we got to practice a lot of、uh, logical thinking, and it's more analytical and technical, and you gain a lot of technical and practical skills. And then for the business side, you also learn more soft skills, and you have the opportunity to participate in case competitions. Or other、um, competitions that exercise your speaking abilities, and I think the mix of these two degrees and these two types of courses、uh, are really cool, and that's why I chose this program. That sounds really cool, and I definitely agree. I think that、um, a program like CS and business really makes、um, a well-rounded individual. Because I feel like CS and business are opposites in a sense in the professional field. One is super.、Mm -hmm. uh, Logical, while the other one is more based on soft skills. So, why did you、yeah. choose this program? Yeah, so I think in high school I was pretty、uh, all over the place with、uh, thinking about where I wanted to go. At first, I wanted I was interested in life science, but then、I、decided probably not. And then I think math was always something that I enjoyed and I liked to do. Except I didn't really want to do anything like financial per se, or with、uh, lots of numbers, or just Um, manual calculation or something like that. 
So I just decided to try out uh, computer science. Um, and then I also was a little bit scared about going into computer science at first. And uh, because I feel like it can be pretty daunting and intimidating at first. And then uh, that's why I decided to go with a double degree instead of just computer science so that I could have more options because I feel like having two degrees allows really greatly expands my options. If I wanted to go into tech, I could. If I wanted to go into business, I still could. And if I wanted to do uh, a job with a mix of both, I still could. So I think for me, it was just more about keeping my options open. And then also, um, I really did enjoy math and math is similar to computer science in a sense. So that's why I decided to choose the program. Oh, okay, cool. So when it comes to your course schedule, is your coursework already established for you by the university? Uh, so for double degree, uh, basically. So for most other co-op programs at Waterloo, it's completed in um, eight work terms and six co-ops. So for double degree, we have 10 work terms and five co-ops. And um, because we're getting two degrees in such a short amount of time, uh, there aren't any electives uh, possible for you to take within your first three years of this program. You only get more options in your fourth and fifth year. So right now, all the courses that I've been taking so far have been set by the university. Uh, however, there are some choices between advanced and normal courses that you can take. So uh, there are small options uh, or choices for you in that sense. But the overall uh, course structure and requirements are set by the university. Oh, okay. Makes sense. So could you tell us some classes that you had to take during your first year? Okay, so in my first year, for my first term, I took five courses in total. So three math courses and two business courses. So for my math courses, I took a introduction to CS course, like a very basic CS course. Uh, it was in Racket, and then I also took a Logics and Proofs course, and then a Calculus course. Uh, and then for my business courses, I took an Economics course, and then also a just general business course. Oh, okay, cool. So which classes did you find the most challenging? Um, for me, I thought that, um, so I took uh, AP Calculus in high school, so I think uh, that really helped me with calculus at university. So I think calculus was okay for me. Um, I do know a lot of uh, my friends did start struggle with calculus. Uh, maybe if you haven't taken, uh, seen those concepts before, uh, you'll find that challenging. But for me, um, I had the background, so that was okay for me. So for me, I think uh, the proof course was pretty challenging because uh, sometimes if I just didn't really see how, like the way to solve the problem or it didn't click, uh, it was really hard for me in that sense. But I think like anything uh, with a lot of practice uh, can help. And also there are many resources, like profs are always open with their office hours. And there's also a lot of instructional assistants that just have like their own office hours as well, um, just throughout the day or like throughout the week. So it's just these um, hours that you can just drop into and then ask for uh, help with your homework problems or more clarification with your work. So I think just by using all those like other resources, like you won't be in trouble. I think even if the course is challenging, there's a lot of ways to um, cope with it as long as you put in the time and effort to um, study more or just like find, seek out help. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I've also heard that proofs is a pretty hard math class since it's pretty abstract from what I understand. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to picking your classes, since you're at Waterloo and uh, Wilfrid Laurier, do you have two portals and then you kind of have to choose from both or is it just one university portal that you access? Yeah, so I think uh, just because a lot of things are administered by both schools, uh, in first year, one of the overwhelming things was having to go on so many different platforms for all your different classes. For, so for the double degree, there's actually like two types. You can be Waterloo-based or Laurier-based. So since I'm Waterloo-based, um, I do all my course selection and stuff through uh, Quest, which was the Waterloo server or portal. And uh, all my course selection is done on there. And then you'll always get emails informing you about uh, if you have to take any actions on the Laurier side. But just in terms of class selection and most administrative stuff, like paying tuition and stuff, uh, that is all through Waterloo because I'm Waterloo-based. 
But then if it um, comes to classes and class content or where your quizzes are, different classes will have different platforms and uh, Waterloo and Laurier will have separate portals for you. So what would you say are the pros and cons of a double degree? Yeah, so I think the pros are, uh, I think I get a lot of opportunities and exposure to um, different aspects of like different sectors. So for example, since I'm in computer science and business, um, a lot of like the extracurriculars we do involve both hackathons and case competitions. So I think uh, those are really good ways to exercise different parts of your abilities and also improve uh, your capabilities and make yourself more well-rounded. Uh, so I think it's really exciting to be able to participate in so many opportunities. And then also I think the people I met in my program have been um, super cool and really interesting and they're always people I look up to. So that's really nice. And then um, I think, uh, oh, another advantage of double degree actually is so if you're just in general math or CS at Waterloo, you don't really have like a cohort system like engineering students do. So um, it could be hard to make um, friends because uh, like you're in classes with like hundreds of people and then like once the class ends, like you might not see them again. So in double degree, even though we don't actually, like we're not really a class and we don't have all our classes together, uh, we still see each other a lot just because uh, we're generally in the same we generally have the same schedules and generally have like the same events we attend. So I super um, nice in the way that I do have, uh, it's better for creating a sense of community. Uh, and it's also uh, really easy to make friends and connections. And uh, yeah, so for cons, I think that sometimes it's just annoying when uh, like, I, the, so the two schools don't have the best communication with each other. So a lot of times, uh, like sometimes we have conflicts I heard that like later on, sometimes your classes are one right after each other. So you'll like always be late to like one of the classes. And then uh, also sometimes you do feel like you're spreading yourself out pretty thin and you're not really concentrating on one particular place because um, you could be doing like math and then suddenly you have to like switch gears and focus on business, which is like completely different. Um, yeah, so uh, for a lot of people, since their interests, like after your first year, they kind of realize what they're more interested in. Uh, a lot of it is very common to um, drop one side of the degree. Uh, but for me personally, I still uh, really like the mix that both sides of the degree give me. So um, yeah, I really like my program so far. Yeah, I think those are some great points you made. And it really gives people who aren't quite sure of what they want to do yet, um, a really big exposure to like, different uh, fields. So now that we've talked a bit about the program, um, I'd like to talk a bit more about the application. So what mm -hmm. are some requirements for the application? Yeah, so for the application, uh, you just have to take advanced functions, calculus, uh, English, and then one other for you course. And then the rest can be um, just whatever courses you want to have in your top six. So, uh, and then also Waterloo does require an AIF. I forgot what it stands for, but it's like, like a supplementary um, form for you to answer questions about your extracurriculars. Um, so that's really important. And then also I think another way to help your application is to write the math contest that uh, Waterloo offers. So they offer the Canadian Senior Mathematics Competition and then also the Euclid contest. So uh, I think those two contests are really good for you to write because they have your scores. And then I think doing well on them uh, can make you stand out. And then uh, doing poorly on them won't hurt your application either. So um, that's all you need for the uh, application process, pretty much. Oh, OK, cool. So did you do the math contest? Yeah, uh, I would also actually recommend you to uh, like if you are in grade 11, you can also just try to write your um, contest in grade 11 as well, because by the time you apply in grade 12, you have those scores to back you up. But also it's fine if you're in grade 12, just make sure to write the contest, because Waterloo does um, wait for, your con like for them to calculate all your contest scores before giving out the admissions. I just wrote the Euclid in grade 12, and then also I wrote the CSNC in grade 11 and grade 12 and then uh, that was that was okay that was enough 
Did you have to write any essays or things like that that you had to do through the application? Uh, no, there weren't any essays. Uh, just on the AI app, there were like very few, but there are a few, like maybe one paragraph question answers. And then um, that's it. So like the application is not very long. Oh, okay, cool. That sounds pretty straightforward. What would you say are the grades that are necessary to have a competitive application? Yeah, so I think grades are very important. Um, and so on the website, it says that the admission average is individual selection from the mid 90s. I think uh, if you have like a 95 and above, that would be good. But I don't want to scare anyone at the same time. Because uh, I think you can stand out in other aspects as well. I think you shouldn't stress too much about your average because getting from like just trying to increase your average by like 2% can be very difficult. But I think like just having maybe like at least 92 and above should be um, pretty decent for this program. But uh, yeah, to be realistic, like your average uh, should be pretty high to um, have a good chance. Okay, cool. And would you say that extracurriculars are also important? Uh, I think so too, I guess, uh, because you can, you do have the opportunity to highlight them in your AIF. That's good as well. But I would also say that maybe you should just, you should try to do extracurriculars that you are actually interested in, so you can be more involved in them and then have more to say about them in your application. Um, but yeah. So all that being said, would you have any advice for students who are interested in applying to this program? Focus on your grades, but don't stress out too much at the same time. Uh, and then also, I think writing the math contest is also uh, pretty useful in um, uh, supplementing your application. But otherwise, uh, I'd say it's pretty straightforward. And also, I... Like, realistically, I don't really know what they looked at uh, when considering my application. So um, I guess just try your best in everything. And if you get in, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And once you get into the program, you're now on campus. How mm -hmm. have you found your experience at Waterloo and Laurier? Yeah, so I lived on the Waterloo campus. Uh, so where I lived was somewhere called University of Waterloo Places. So um, it was like a suite style. Uh, there were rooms, I had roommates, and then there was a kitchen. And the reason I chose this place was because um, it's like in the middle of Waterloo and Laurier. So walking to Laurier would be 600 meters away. Uh, and then walking to like the math building is also like 600 meters away. So it's really convenient in this sense. Um, I think campus is, uh, sorry, residence is pretty convenient. And uh, personally, I like to cook, so having a kitchen was really good in that sense. Um, sometimes you do have to, like grocery shopping or just chores around the suite do take up some time, but it's not too bad. And then I think that um, living in residence, you get to meet a lot of new people too. And then uh, you get to create friends uh, with your uh, roommates or floor mates. And then uh, I think that's like a really nice way to uh, connect with people. Cool. So you already touched upon it a bit, but what would the daily life of a student on res at Waterloo um, look like? Uh, so I didn't have, like, I wouldn't say my day was packed with classes, but uh, I think on a regular day, I would have had around three classes, maybe. So I'd get up around 7.30 to 8, eat breakfast, and then walk to class. So in first year, my classes uh, usually started at 8.30 or 9.30, so I think it was a pretty decent time. Uh, 8.30s were a little bit hard to get up for, but uh, I think 9.30s were like a good uh, time for you to get up early enough so that you're productive, but then also it's like enough time for you to sleep. So I'd go to my classes and then um, I, there would be some breaks in between classes where I could just like study a bit more or like have lunch. And then, uh, yeah, so for first year, I had my math courses in the mornings, and then uh, we had like a longer, like maybe one to two hour break for lunch, uh, and then I had learning classes in the afternoon. So it was like a good, it was pretty nicely organized so that I had enough time to go between campuses. And then after classes end, 
Uh, so this is around maybe four or five in the afternoon. We would, um, uh, there's a lot of events going on on campus all the time. So uh, if I just pass by an event, I just probably drop in and hang out. Or that, or, uh, you know, if I join some clubs, I go to club meetings or stuff like that. And then also study, of course, and then just go to sleep and do it all again. That's pretty much it. <laughs> that sounds pretty fun. So talking about clubs, were you part of any clubs at Waterloo? Okay, so my first term, I tried to join uh, this like solar racing design team. Um, but I think that honestly, it was a little bit hard to like really get involved. And then also, uh, sometimes I did feel a bit overwhelmed about like the time commitment, or uh, the amount of um, just effort and time I had to put into the club. So uh, I didn't really, I wasn't really able to commit to that. Uh, and then in second term i tried to become more involved with like sports so i joined intramural ultimate frisbee and then that was like just a really fun way to uh chill with friends and then also it's it's not really too competitive uh like there is like a scoreboard and stuff but uh it's just really just a way to um have fun and then also uh there is i also joined this small like capture the flag team uh sorry club uh, group type thing uh, and then we just had capture the flag games uh, I think on Sunday afternoons at like Waterloo Park which was this field behind like really close to UWP so right right behind my residence and then yeah honestly personally I wasn't into uh, involved in that many clubs and uh, I think that is something I would want to like I do regret a little bit uh, and I would try to be more involved if I had another chance to but uh, yeah for me I think first term Adjusting to university took up a lot of time. And then also in second term, uh, searching for co-op took up a lot of time. So um, I really just tried to focus on um, like academics and uh, finding a job and stuff like that. So I wasn't uh, really able to get too much into uh, clubs, but there are a lot, yeah. Um, that makes a lot of sense. And, uh, and it sounds like you had a good time with all your, your sport and activity teams. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that most of your time was taken up by the academics. Um, how would you describe the academic part of your program? And do you find your program challenging? Yeah, um, I think I was like really, really scared going to the program. Uh, and then it wasn't too bad uh, after. But uh, I think like it's structured, structured really well in the sense where like you have uh, assignments due every week at the same time on the same day and then or quizzes every week on the same time at the same day so um, it's pretty formulaic like, like once you get into the hang of just reading your notes attending lectures and then uh, writing your quizzes and your homework assignments uh, it's pretty straightforward um, that's from Waterloo um, I think like something I didn't expect though was from the Laurier side so for my business course we had to work on this really large project called the new venture project and then um since since that wasn't like so structured and uh, um, defined in the sense where uh, if you put this amount of time in you, you'll be done like i found that uh it sucked up a lot of time because it was also a group assignment and a group project so we had a lot of group meetings and then sometimes if you're uh, since our class group members would be from both waterloo and laurier like we'd be living in separate places so you have to coordinate a lot and then that also just takes a lot of time to coordinate and then also just work on the group project. So I'd say um, business uh, took up a lot of time in the first year. Uh, and then for CS and math, the content is harder and you do think more. But I think it's more like as soon as you create a schedule for yourself and uh, settle into it, like it's, it's really no problem. And there's always like so many resources and like study groups that um, you can use and take advantage of. So. I'd say don't be too scared of the academics. Oh, okay, cool. So uh, it's kind of like a question of adapting mm -hmm. yourself to the different situations. Yeah. So you also said that uh, finding work has taken up a lot of your time during the past, uh, past yeah. few months. So how has your experience been with finding co-ops through your program? Yeah, so um, the first, so my first co-op term was uh, last summer from May to August 
So I started looking for jobs at the beginning of January. So uh, I think, okay, so how it works is there is this portal called Waterloo Works where it's a portal for employers to post a bunch of jobs and then students can go in and then filter through them and uh, try to find what jobs interest them. So applying is actually not the time consuming part because all you have to do is submit your resume and that's pretty much it. Um, a lot of times companies don't even require cover letters. Uh, so what took up a lot of time was sifting through the questions. So I think in uh, the first time I was going through a job search, there are around like thousands of postings. But then for your first round, you were only allowed to sit like a submit 50. So um, I spent a lot of time just looking at what I thought I was qualified for and then also what I was interested in. And then like you can just imagine having to read through so many postings is kind of crazy. And then also, uh, once you do have your interview scheduled, uh, like they do take priority over class classes, right? So uh, a lot of times interviews could um, be uh, cut in to your class time and then uh, you could fall behind and then it's kind of a vicious cycle. So uh, it takes a lot of time to um, be consistent and make sure you don't fall behind. Uh, like the good thing is all the interviews do take place uh, at this one building called the Tatum Center uh, on the Waterloo campus. So at least you don't have to travel anywhere for your interviews. The, in the employers will come to you to interview you. And then I think another thing is there are a lot of employer info sessions that go around along, on campus. So there's like a calendar that you can search up. Um, so basically companies will ha like give a presentation about their uh, job openings or their company in like some random room uh, somewhere on the Waterloo campus. Uh, a lot of times companies do give out like application links there so uh, you can like um, apply through those links and then also it's a great way to get your face shown at recruiters and then also um, I think it was a good way for me to learn how to network more <laughs> because I think coming from high school I didn't really understand the concept of networking yeah so the job search was a uh, pretty time consuming for yeah that sounds like it does take up a lot of time Mm -hmm. And I've heard uh, from people who go to Waterloo or who have thought about going to Waterloo that um, the Waterloo Co-op is uh, a pretty good program in a way. Uh, did you feel supported by the program and do you think it helped you find your, your summer jobs? Uh, I think like one of the advantages is that you can, like all the employers come to you so you don't have to travel for your interviews. Um, so it's pretty straightforward in that sense. And then also, I think it really pushes you and challenges you to just search for jobs. And then also, like, it also helps me reflect on myself or, like, think, like, push me to think about what I really wanted to do. Because um, I'm really, like, I don't really have a specific, like, goal or ambition. And I just really wanted to use co-op as a way to explore my different options and explore the different roles I could potentially take on later on. So I think that, like, looking at, looking through co-op, it really gives you a good sense of like what's out there for you and what's available for you to uh, partake in or achieve. And then I think like um, if Waterloo, like the co-op process wasn't there, I don't think I would have pushed myself uh, that hard on my own to like actively go out to search for jobs. And I think like you learn so much from the process, just from like time management, uh, how to balance your academics as well as the job search. And then also just how to uh, like look for good openings, look for good positions, and how to be charismatic like in front of recruiters even, and how to present yourself I think is really important um, aside from your uh, actual physical qualifications. Yeah, those sound like very good points. Um, so what sort of co-op experiences have you had in the past? Yeah, so I've only had uh, one co-op so far and uh, it was at RBC and specifically RBC Ventures. So RBC Ventures is pretty much like a bunch of startups that are funded by RBC. So uh, I think it was a really good mix for me because startup culture can be very stressful uh, because startups don't have a lot of money or they're like sometimes understaffed. But um, being in a startup at RBC, uh, I was backed up by, you know, there are a lot of resources uh, backed up. So I think it was less stressful and it was more chill uh, way to spend a co-op. And uh, so in the team I was on, it was a very small team. So I think uh, another thing is having a small team allows you to have a holistic aspect of the product you're building. So you kind of really understand 
like all aspects of it. And it's also really interesting to observe how like different components come together. And uh, so specifically, I was working on an app called RenoShield, and it's an app that facilitates um, homeowner and contractor transactions. Uh, so they haven't launched the app yet. So I was just working on uh, mainly working on the push notifications uh, capabilities. And the good thing about RBC was that since it's such a large corporation, they did have like events for summer students. They had like talks going on, podcasts, events, activities, challenges going on. So uh, if you did find idle time at work, which is um, I think idle time is something that happens a lot when you're a co-op, uh, there is always a lot of stuff to do. And um, I think it was a really good way to also just build a network and then meet other professionals in your field. And um, I had a really good time. Yeah. That sounds like a really interesting co-op placement. Mm -hmm. So after co-ops and after all the studies, um, the people will graduate. And where are the grads uh, headed typically in your program? Yeah, so I think a lot of grads uh do go more towards technical careers i think so a lot of them just become software engineers developers stuff like that but also since uh we do have the business side a lot of options include product product managers or project management or even uh just stuff or careers that um are an intersection of tech and business yeah i think there's just honestly a lot of options Cool. That does sound like a broad spectrum of things that graduates can pursue. So personally, when it comes to you, where are you headed after graduation? Or do you have an idea of what you would like to do? Yeah, so for me, I'm still very unsure because like, I chose this like program that gave me so many options just because I was unsure. And then still now, since I've only done one co-op, um, I feel like I still have four more co-ops to really explore my options. So I'm still looking forward to I guess trying out different roles in my future co-ops. So right now I am still pretty unsure, but my options are very open. So for the upcoming co-ops, did you have any idea of what you'd like to try out? Uh, yeah, so for right now, uh, I still do want to um, explore more of just software engineering because I'm still not very good at it and I just want to have more experience and more opportunities. Because uh, like another thing is I think um, sometimes it's really hard to figure out where to start. Like if you want to build a project or something, it can be hard to like just get into it. And I think also a good chance uh, for sparking interest in something or like uh, I think being able to see how a technology is really used in the real world um, gives motivation to learn more about it. So I think for my previous co-op, I was like, I was inspired by um, seeing how the front end and back end of the product work together and fit together to deliver something so uh right now i think i'm just still looking to explore more um like development roles uh just to improve my skills cool i'm sure you'll find a lot of interesting co-op placements that you'll be able to uh, pursue i'd just like to um ask another question on your program so mm -hmm. since it's a double degree and you don't have many electives, do you think that you still have the opportunity to go in depth in both domains, whether it's business or um, CS? Uh, yes, I think uh, so people, a lot of people still do end up uh, getting minors or specializations uh, with like the electives that they can have uh, in their fourth and fifth year. And um, I think that ultimately, the reason why um, dropping out of one side of the degree is so common is because people like discover what they want to do more and they have a clearer image of like what they'd want to pursue. So I think um, dropping one side of the degree is uh, what a lot of people do if they do want to go more in depth in one area. But for me, I think uh, I'm content with like the mix of CS and business I'm getting right now. That sounds great. This concludes today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you, Shihan, for coming on and having a chat with me. Yeah, thank you so much. I had a great time today. I hope you guys find this useful and thank you. This episode is part of Inquiry's focus series, Tech After High School. We hope you enjoyed. Thanks for tuning in and having us be a part of your journey to code your future. Make sure to follow us on social media to stay in the loop and for a chance to have your questions answered in our next episode. See you then.